So guys, today we're going to be expanding on the last video where I was talking about the easiest times of day to trade, or at least one of the easiest times, specifically between kind of 2 p.m. UK time and 4, 4.30 p.m. UK time. It's one of my favorite times to trade. Um, it always has been. And uh, I just want to add some more structure. I want to talk about some more scenarios where hopefully uh, some rules will come clearer so that we can begin to build out more of a specific plan so that you can go ahead and backtest this, see if it's something that you like. And, uh, and then, yeah, then we can go from there. So let's uh, not beat around the bush. So what's the theory of what we are going to be doing here? Well, typically, we know that the market is going to trend about 30% of the time or less, okay? That means it's going to consolidate or do some variation of the consolidation 70% of the time. Uh, sorry, consolidation. So what that means is it means that if we want to go for those higher win rate type scenarios, then we're going to need to go after after consolidation environments. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't take something from trending uh, to in increase the probability. It just means that the way that we interact with the market is going to be more conducive to uh, consolidatory conditions. Now, instead of boring you with all of the ins and outs, why don't I just give you the practical sets of rules? Well, it's very, very simple. Ultimately, we are looking for a daily high or daily ho low to be, not daily ho, <laughs> to be raided. And then we're looking for a strong impulsive move in the other direction. And that is going to give us our indication of two things, our level and our direction. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, let's imagine that we have a daily low right here. The next day we come and sweep it. Then we start kind of consolidating. Normally, this is what we do. We consolidate around where the previous daily low was. And then we have a very strong impulsive move. Then as we come into our particular time of day, which is, let's just say it's around here, then we're going to be looking for typically some kind of retracement move in here. Sometimes it will come back to this original consolidation. Sometimes it will form another consolidation within here. And then we look to trade it back up. Now, whether it's here when it comes down to this time of day or whether we got all the way down here to this time of day, it doesn't really matter because our direction is the most important thing that we've gotten from this. And so all we're really looking for is a raid of a daily high or low. And the same thing works for weekly highs and lows. I haven't tested it with four hour highs and lows, but the, the, again, the principles are the same. Um, and, uh, and we simply just use that for our direction and for a little insight into levels. So let's look at some examples here. Keep in mind with this indicator, each one of these um, is a daily high and daily low. So let's go back a little bit. So let's pick this one. Okay, so you can see right here, we come down, we have raided that low. We don't know that it has been raided until we have a nice, strong, impulsive move afterwards. Okay, now you can see here we had a nice, strong, impulsive move. We then began to consolidate again, and then we had a nice little impulsive move again. Then we kind of worked our way up slowly. And then as we came down into our peak time of day, we came all the way back down to where? We came all the way back down to where the start of this imbalance is right here, roughly around here. Now, of course, if you're putting it around the whole consolidation, it could look like that. Why have I drawn it around this? Well, basically, this is just a level that created imbalance. It's a level that created um, imbalance. And why is that important? Well, because imbalance is just a way of defining an impulsive move, okay? That's at least the way that I like to do it, where I like to think about it, simple as that. So you can see we create that one sidedness around here. And then during that time of day, we don't need to worry about any of this stuff because we are coming to the market at this specific time. And then we wait or we put a limit there, although I'm always more of a fan of confirmation just because the performance is better. And then we can continue riding it up um, for a little bit. Now, how much should we ride it up? Well, typically, again, when we understand that the markets are more consolidatory and that this strategy is definitely focused on more of the mean reversion end, it means that we're not going for as high targets. It means that we are just focusing on probability and win rate and just getting a nice level of consistency up at the most basic level instead of trying to capture these moves that just fly off for hundreds of pips okay so typically what that would look like is just at the most basic level without any lower time frame stuff that may complicate may just look something like this okay we're not trying to take it to the high or anything like that although that there's nothing wrong with that um it just means that we're looking for a little piece okay and that's just an example there are other tools that we can look at to identify specific targets whether you draw out a fib from where it um where we raided and then maybe target the two three six or maybe target a higher one up here 
doesn't really matter. Uh, even if you did target the overall high, I mean, that's fine. It's all up to you. At the end of the day, mean reversion really comes down to the target that you have and whether you are going for more probability or high risk reward. I've, as I've said on this channel many, many times, if you're a beginner, the higher risk reward strategies come with higher losses and most people are not equipped to deal with the emotions that come with that, even if on paper those that strategy performs better, okay? So let's look at another example here. We come up over here we take price out very quickly this previous daily high and then we come down very very aggressively we create imbalance twice i believe we have a very very small one over here and then we have one over here okay and so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap we're interested in the piece uh, the chunk of price before each um imbalance or fair value gap whatever the hell we want to call it really doesn't matter um because at the end of the day, the consolidation just before is what caused it. And so therefore, because time is volume or consolidation equals volume, essentially, what we see here is a very, very clear indication of price creating it, coming back, retesting it, and then coming back down. Now, in this particular example, this wasn't during our time of day. And so it's not really relevant to us, okay? Because again, that time of day that we are looking for is around about here. So what do we see here? Is there anything that we can decipher around here? Well, yes, in the exact same way that we did it over here, Okay, you can have it drawn in a few different ways. Okay, because we have the Asian session right here, you could just put it around this entire chunk because again, consolidation equals uh, volume at the end of the day. And so during this period, we've chopped around a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and then we finally break out. Now, of course, you could come at it with the argument of, oh, okay, well, why don't I put it up here? Because this is the last bit before it created this imbalance. And yes, on paper, that makes sense. But you are reducing the amount of setups that you're going to get. And remember, what is most important with this strategy is time, not the magic level that you are picking. So what does that mean? Well, it means that as we get to like two, the close of two, 2.30-ish, so around about here in between these kind of candles, um, it means that based on where we are around here, that is going to be where we decide what level is most likely. Because we can see that we're still a ways off up here. And so if we come all the way back up here during this period, then potentially our overall bias is wrong and therefore I'm not interested. And so it makes the most sense to mark it around like this, not because I'm using hindsight or anything like that, just because of where we are in time. This is just how it works. We are playing off the tendency and we've got to understand the tendency of the strategy that we are trading. Otherwise, it's all completely pointless. OK, and so let's look for another example if we have one here. Um Okay, so where we are right now in price is quite interesting to me. Okay, we can see right here, we come up, we take out that previous day's high, and then we begin consolidating around the area, and then we have another impulsive move over here. Now today, depending on where we are, we are. so I'm uploading this today, so you should, um, by the time you're watching this, I've seen how this has played out, or at least be in the middle of it. So I think I'm uploading this at 5 p.m., so it probably would have played out, so that's perfect. So notice what happens right here, okay? You can see that price has taken out the high, kind of consolidated, then we have another impulsive move over here. Now, regardless of whether I have this zone marked out or not, this is just to mark the imbalance. It's not really relevant. All I really care about is, okay, when it gets to, let's just say 2, 2.30, let's just put 2 until 4.30 here. Where we are around here is going to be very significant. Now, if I had to guess, how far price is going to go during that time, I'm not sure, okay? Price could still, of course, go up, but for this strategy, the probability is to the downside, okay? Now, it could come back up into these areas up here where this little imbalance started slash this little retest area, or it could come up high, it could come up into this whole area. I would say it, based on how price is moving now, anywhere within this range is going to be good, okay? So typically, you know, if you want to mark out some sort of a fib within here, Nothing wrong with that whatsoever, okay? It's all just different, oh, excuse me. It's all just different ways of doing the same thing, okay? And so that's pretty much it, guys. It's literally take out a daily high or a low, then create a very impulsive move, and then return to that sort of area during a, a particular time of day, and then aiming for a little piece of the pie. Not huge amounts of pips or anything like that, just a little bits here and there, little bits here and there. That's all you're going for. And then of course, as you get better with time, you can look at refining things on the lower time frame, adding a little bit more um, specificity into it, and then 
refining things down later. But in the beginning, just focus on being consistent and getting those basics down. Otherwise, you're just refining nothing, okay? And so very, very important to do that. But anyway, listen, guys, I'm going to stop talking now. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd appreciate you leaving a like. And if you'd like to learn more about any of these concepts, then I do recommend checking out the links in the description. But either way, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.